Good morning. Morning. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. It's Tuesday, July 16th today. Everybody okay? Huh? Hi, Ava. Hello, Ava. Okay, today is a feast day. Today is a feast day of Our Lady. Who can guess? The feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. It is, <clears throat> yeah, the day of the scapula. Okay. Huh? <clears throat> oh, you're wearing yours already. That's good. <clears throat> okay, so today is the day we celebrate the the day when uh, Our Lady appeared to who was the saint? Who was a Carmelite? Uh, monk that uh, became a saint. Uh, saint Simon Stock is his name. Uh, saint <laughs> Simon Stock. On July 16, 1251. The year 1251. Okay, and the story goes that uh, Saint Simon Stock was praying in the Carmelite convent and Our Lady appeared to him. And Our Lady... Uh, gave him this scapular, this scapular, the original scapular. She handed him, let's read from the, the history. She handed him a brown woolen scapular and said, this shall be a privilege for you and all Carmelites that anyone dying in this habit shall not suffer eternal fire. Okay, so anybody who would die wearing the scapular would not suffer eternal fire. What does that mean? Yeah. We'll go to hell. Right? Our Lady would bring that soul to heaven. So, but then there are conditions, of course, as to how uh, Our Lady could give this privilege to those who are devoted to the scapular. And this is called a Sabbatine privilege. Sabbatine what does that sound like? Sabatin. Sabado, right? Sabado or Saturday. So Our Lady has promised that she would go down to purgatory and fish us out of there if we end up being in purgatory. Within the first Saturday of the week of our death. Okay? That is why, if you recall, when Grandpa died, when Grandpa Jacob died, I was already playing that scenario in my head, right? <clears throat> when I was saying he was not going to die on a Friday, even if everybody was already thinking he might die on, on that Friday, right? June 11th, I mean January 11th. But I already had it in my mind saying, no, he's going to die tomorrow, January 12th, which happens to be a Saturday. And I was saying... Our Lady is going to take him straight to heaven. Right? Straight to heaven. Well, because Grandpa, of course, was a devotee of Our Lady's scapular. And he died wearing the scapular of Our Lady. So I was very confident. <clears throat> Inside of me, I was very confident that Our Lady was going to grant him that kind of uh, privilege. The Sabbatine privilege. Right? <clears throat> because, our, because Grandpa is very devoted to Our Lady, particularly to Our Lady Scapular. So Our Lady said um, that she was going to take to heaven anybody who died wearing the brown scapular. Now, this privilege, the popes, uh, several popes have already uh, mandated that this privilege not be limited to the Carmelites. It had been extended to all the faithful. That is why all of us can avail of the uh, privilege of Our Lady, uh, the Sabbatine privilege, if we uh, are devoted to Our Lady's uh, scapular. And that is why we made it a point that all of you get to be enrolled in that uh, scapular of Our Lady. Okay? So, <clears throat> but there are conditions <clears throat> by which we could... 
uh, be privileged to obtain the, that grace from Our Lady. And what are those conditions? Number one, wear the scapular continuously. In other words, all throughout our lives, from the moment that we get enrolled in it. So, by the way, there are plenty of people who wear the scapular without understanding that uh, they have to be enrolled in the scapular. Okay? It's not just a question of going to a religious store and picking up a scapular and donning it on you and thinking, Okay, I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I'm already uh, wearing it. Well, not quite. We have to be enrolled in it. And it's easy to be enrolled in the scapular. Just ask any priest. And uh, they have the uh, enrollment formula, uh, you know, and they can just enroll you in the, in the scapular. It doesn't have to be on the Feast of Our Lady either. See, it can be any time, any day, and they can enroll you. But it has to be, you have to be enrolled in the scapular for you to be part of that uh, whole devotion. Number two, number two uh, condition, we have to observe chastity the virtue of chastity is one very important condition that our lady uh, wants us to live by See? among all the virtues our lady seems to put some emphasis on the virtue of chastity especially for those devotees to the immaculate i mean the immaculate conception the, the scapular of our lady and that's chastity <clears throat> in any state <clears throat> in any state um, um, you know, by uh, uh, whether you're single or you're married, because chastity can be lived in any condition in life, whether you are married or single. So chastity is a very important component of the conditions, right? And then number three, you can do either of these things: recite the uh, the little office of the Virgin of Virgin Mary, or Observe the fasts of the church together with abstaining from meat on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Or, with permission of a priest, say five decades of Our Lady's Most Holy Rosary. Or, with permission of a priest, substitute for some other good work. Well, uh, huh? well as a substitute. It depends on your spiritual director. Okay? What he might recommend you do as a substitute to fasting, to mortification, okay? so, uh, uh, and to prayer. So in our case, well, we, we observe the, one of these things already every day, which is to pray the five decades of the rosary. So we do the rosary every day, so we're also we're fulfilling that particular condition. Okay? And then, of course, uh, in order to obtain the grace, the Sabbatine privilege, we also need to go to confession. Okay? with some frequency and that is another part of the conditions because because uh, if you die with mortal sin well our lady cannot do anything about that because you're not even going to purgatory anymore see you go straight to hell if you die with mortal sin right so confession is a very important uh, part of the uh, conditions that our lady uh, wants us to do Okay, so one good habit, one good habit, since we, we are all wearing the scapular of Our Lady. You see, the scapular should be a reminder for us. It should be a reminder for us about the presence of God in our lives, the presence of Our Lady in our lives. So one very good habit to have, especially when we are uh, encountering difficult uh, situations, when we are going through difficult times in our lives, when we're encountering temptations, it is always a good habit okay, to kiss the scapular. To kiss your scapular and talk to Our Lady. Talk to Our Lady and ask Our Lady's help, especially in times of temptation. <clears throat> okay? Especially in them, kiss the scapular. Talk to Our Lady. She's very close to you. She's right there. She's right there. Okay? Uh, <laughs> by the way, I have two medals hanging on my neck. Okay? One is, of course, the scapular of Our Lady, just in case you're wondering. And the other one is a medallion of St. Joseph. Okay? Medallion of St. Joseph. So I also have a very big devotion to St. Joseph. So I have them both 
hanging uh, around my neck. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, you might. Some people, some people ask the question: Should we be wearing the brown woolen scapular, or can we use medals as a substitute? Okay. Well, what Our Lady gave to Saint Simon Stock, and what the Carmelites always uh, encourage, is to wear the woolen, uh, the woolen kind of um, scapular. Okay, the woolen scapular. Okay. But some popes have, have given the, um, um, well, not, an, not really an exception, but have permitted, have permitted the, the uh, substitution of a medal, okay? of a medal, especially in uh, countries which are hot, like tropical countries where you sweat a lot and wool is not a good, it's not really an ideal thing to be wearing all the time, right? So, but... It is also recommended that at the hour of death, at the hour of death, you substitute the medal for the actual woolen uh, scapular. Okay, so that is why, uh, if you remember, when Grandpa died, we did the same thing. Right? He was wearing a gold uh, medal uh, of the uh, scapular of Our Lady, which we changed to the woolen one. Right? So I'm already putting you all on notice, okay? When I die, don't forget to substitute this <laughs> before I die. <laughs> don't wait, okay? If I'm on my deathbed, you better change this into the woolen scapular. Okay. Anyway, so let's live up to uh, to the uh, expectations of Our Lady. Okay? She's giving us this very big privilege, this very big help um, of, of uh, helping us live a good life, a virtuous life. She wants to accompany us in this journey, okay? Physically, by wearing, by, by being with us bodily, physically, you know, uh, uh, represented by the scapular that we are wearing, okay? But let us, let us not disappoint our lady. Let us live good lives, chaste lives, prayerful lives, okay? That our lady should have, shouldn't have second thoughts about bringing us to heaven if and when uh, we, we die. At the time that our Lord uh, calls us to His presence, Our Lady will be there to uh, fish us out of purgatory okay? on the Saturday of the week that we die. Okay? Well then, going back, go, going to the Gospel of the day, where, where the Gospel of today is from St. Matthew, and here... Here, our Lord is talking about how, how people would, would be repentant if only they had been privileged to, to witness and to enjoy the, the miracles and the mighty works that Jesus was doing in their midst. Okay? So let's listen. Jesus began to reproach the towns where most of his mighty deeds had been done since they had not repented. And he tells them, Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have long repented in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. What is our Lord telling us here? These people okay, who witnessed our Lord's miracles and the great things our Lord was doing for them, they felt, okay, they felt a sense of, well, a combination of things. They felt a sense of shame for their unworthiness to be recipients of such good things. Okay? They felt guilty that, oh, wow, you know, despite the fact that we, are, we have been sinful, God has given us so much, so much, as a, an expression of His love for us, as an expression of His mercy towards our sinfulness. So these people from, from uh, uh, Tyre and Sidon and uh, uh, you know, uh, pagan territory, as far as uh, um, Jesus was concerned during those times, uh, the people there felt like they were so unworthy of these many good things. And as a consequence of their sense of shame and gratitude, 
and gratitude for the many good things that they have received, they repented from their sins. See, so repentance, repentance is a sign of gratitude. To be sorry for the sins that we committed is a sign of gratitude to God. It's a sign of recognizing the benefits we have received despite despite our sinfulness despite all of all of our wretchedness god has come to us god has rescued us god has saved us from our sins and has given us so many good things in life he's so many good things and that is why really as a, as a as a manifestation of our own gratitude for all the good things we receive from god the least we can do the least we can do is to repent from our sins to be sorry for the offenses we have committed against god and then to show a little bit of um to show a little bit of uh, 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 um, you know making up right for all of these for all of these bad things that we have done we have to make up we have to show a sincere effort that we are going to straighten up our lives because that is the way that we show repentance for our sins. That is the way we show gratitude for all the good things that God has given us. And we have to break that down very concretely okay, to, to, the, to our own lives, to our own family, to our own, to our own situation in life. We too have been recipients of many, many good things. Many, many good things. You kids enjoy plenty of good things in life. That many children have not even dreamt about. You see? Many children have not even experienced. You are recipients of many good things. Let us show some gratitude to God for it. Let us show our, our sense of uh, appreciation to God for all the good things that He has been giving us. And one way of really showing that is to well shape up right be sorry for our sins shape up and put the sincere effort to correct our ways to do better to live the virtues we have been teaching you to live up to all the expectations that our lord and our lady has for all of us okay so today is a good day the feast day of our lady of mount carmel to renew to renew our desires of being good, to renew our desires of being saints, to renew our desires of showing God how grateful we are for the many good things that He has sent us in our lives. Okay? Okay, that's it for us, folks. We're off to Mass. Oh, no, we're going to Mass tonight, right? Yeah, today, today's a different schedule. Okay, we're going to Mass tonight. But anyway, have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. I think we're a little too dark today, but we should change this thing by tomorrow. But maybe I should take that place. Bye-bye, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye.